So agile life cycle revolves around three. They are predictive life cycle, iterative life cycle, and adaptive life cycle. Like so, with predictive life cycle, we mean that uh, time and cost are required to deliver that scope. So in this, where uh, requirements are defined early and they are not changed. So if there is a change, probably we will hold on to that and we will change them in a uh, another phase. So this is not very important. So guys, I will be real quick with these three things, these three life cycles. Okay. Uh, the it, and it is uh, and probably the cost of incurring that change is uh, would be pretty less. Right? The end result is delivered only at the display. So it is a small waterfall kind of a thing. So for example, if you are working in a sprint, uh, it's a three-week sprint and uh, uh, it's a three-week sprint and you only get to test uh, at the end of a sprint. Maybe in the first two weeks you are doing the development and the third week you are testing. This would be a predictive life cycle. It's a mini waterfall model but in a small chunks okay okay in a iterative iterative is something we have been talking about we would be working on a, a small chunks and we will be doing everything requirement design implementation testing and review every time we are doing a development every time they are working on some feature and the end product here is always delivered at the end of the each iteration. Okay. Are you guys aware of this iron triangle? No, not me. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard, I mean, I've seen it. Please. So, yeah. Please. Please. Oh. Yeah, Hello? Yeah, so uh, basically in traditional uh, what happens is the requirements remain fixed, right? We are not changing the requirement. The requirements are never revised. They are fixed. If I need a jet fighter, I, my requirement would be I need a jet fighter, right? My time would change. I, I, I uh, estimated it to be two years, but my time would turn out to be three years, four years, my time changes, my cost, obviously with time my cost increases, but the scope never changes. But in Agile, the time and cost are fixed, but the scope is variable. Right? So we are, since we adapt, we, we permit changes, we are changing the scope as well. We are reviewing the change based on the feedback cycles, feedback loops, we are changing the scope. So the time and cost remains fixed and we work on uh, the variable part becomes the scope. So this is called the flipping of an iron triangle. Okay? Yeah. So in uh, traditional iron, iron triangle, if you change one of the variables, one of the other variable has to change too. So for example, if you have to add additional scope in the project, which hardly is the case, the time and the cost too has to go high. While in the agile iron triangle, uh, the value of the project is considered to be the priority. So the value is always delivered when we are delivering a quality product with the changing, with, adap with adapting a change. Yes, my cost and cost and schedule is a constraint, but we work on prioritizing the requirements, but we are adding value to the customer by delivering the right product. We are delivering the verified and validated product to the customer. Right? My constraints could be cost and scope, but then when customer understands customer is involved throughout the life cycle of the project, he would obviously appreciate why the cost would increase. Okay, so this is called flipping of the triangle. So now is incremental and iterative delivery. So incremental is, okay, I'll, I think this could be explained better with an example here. Okay, so incremental is, uh, I want to have a monolisa 
right? So in incremental, I'll first work on the pic, on the face, then on the arms, and then on the complete body. But in iterative, I'm completely working on the complete pic of Mona Lisa, but I'm enhancing it. Right? So in a typical example which I gave you, uh, I want 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. In, in incremental, in first stage, I would be just taking the in, input from a input for my code. In second phase, I would be adding, adding it. In the third phase, I would be storing it in a variable x. While in iterative, I would be doing 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 in the first stage. In the second stage, probably I am taking 3 plus 2 as an input from a user. I am refactoring it. Mm. Right? And in the third variable, uh, in the third iteration, maybe, I am uh, returning that 5 value. So in this is how I am improvising. In the incremental, mm. I am working in bits and parts and then collaborating it and binding them together. In iterative, I am working on everything together, but at a, in bits and bits, I am enhancing it. Okay. So now here comes the most important part of this chapter, which is Agile Manifesto. So Agile Manifesto was designed in 2001 uh, these seven, by 17 uh, people. Okay, so these 17 people had met together uh, for discussion on a project and something. They were from most of them, I, for, I think, for ThoughtWorks. They got together and came up with these three manifestos. Uh, so it says the items on the left have more value than the items on the right. So items on the right are from the word over. So everything before over has more value than the items on the after over, like processes and tools. Right? So the first says, first manifesto, first point in manifesto says individual and interactions over processes and tools. So as we have talked about, Agile believes in interacting on an individual basis, one-on-one -on -one basis, having interactions rather following the processes and tools. Right? Rather getting, um, rather than putting a query in a requirement tracker and checking it in and waiting for it to come, I would probably pick up a phone, update the require, get a requirement result, update it, and circulate it. So I, we believe in interacting rather than following the processes and tools. Second says working software over comprehensive documentation. So I think this is point. This point is pretty clear. So my I value more working software. Right? If my I don't see a working software, there is no value to the documents produced. I don't care if I have a requirement document. I don't care if I have a test strategy. All I care is a working software. So at the end of the each iteration, I should be able to see a working software. If my software doesn't work, it is of no value to a user or to the customer or to the team. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. So rather than following the contract, I would value my customer more. I would value my customer needs. I will, my priority would be delivering value to my customer. I would prefer responding to a change rather than following a plan. I think th these were pretty explanatory, but uh, if you have any doubts, just let me know. Okay, uh, I will quickly uh, read all of these seven, uh, twelve principles which have been jotted down from the three agile four agile manifestos. Uh, if you have any doubts, just uh, and just let me know. I'll just stop and clarify because these are the points we have already talked about. Mm -hmm. Certifying customer is my top priority. This is the first principle. Second says welcoming change in the requirements. Right? Third is delivering working software. Fourth is development and business work together. There are no teams. Complete uh, test, QA, client, product owner, everybody works together as a one team. Right? 
the primary measure of success is a working software. Team regularly reflects on what work and then tunes and adjusts to its behavior. They are adapting, they are refactoring themselves. After uh, every sprint, they are uh, reviewing their, their work and they are trying to analyze what went wrong and what did not. They are retrospecting. Build projects around motivated team. Team has the spirit of ownership and they have trust between each other. Most effective and efficient method of con uh, conveying information to and within development team is to have a face-to-face -face communication. If there are cross-location uh, teams, uh, pick up the phone, have video conferencing, the best, but the best mode of communication is a face-to-face -face communication. If face-to-face -face communication cannot happen for some strange reasons like have conference calls, chat, right? Hmm. Continuous attention to the technical excellence and the good design. So we are refactoring ourselves, so we are improving the quality, so technical excellence. Tenth point is simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. Okay, so I would want to, what do you mean by this point? Simplicity, the art of um, maximizing the amount of work not done. Any idea? Okay, so it talks about eliminating the waste. It says it means it is it's just the play of a language, but it means that something which is not needed, forget it. Eliminate the waste. Decide as late as possible. Super. Okay, it's just the language. So it all it means is eliminate the waste. Okay. So best architectural requirements come from uh, self-organizing teams. Uh, agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsored development is used to be able to maintain a constant space.